entertainment has been going on all week here in Inuvik, the host for the 6th Inuit Circumpolar Conference. It's been a most exciting week, both inside Sir Alexander Mackenzie School, where the conference has been taking place, outside on the park and down the main street. July 24th, 1992 marks the final day of the General Assembly. You'll meet the new Inuit Circumpolar President, hear some of the resolutions passed. But first, we'll bring you some greetings from the many, many happy Inuit people that have been attending. And you'll hear some entertainment clips from the many countries during the gala evening events. I'm Debbie Gordon Rubin. Welcome to Swangan. <laughs> I just want to say hello to all my friends and relatives in the Delta. I'm Alice French, normally Alice Smith. Okay? Hello, thank you. Uh, it's good to see you, a lot of friends right there, and you. Thank you. Choose the banner, me. Yeah, can I can I talk about the cooks to kicks in material? Over over work, Warren and Mark, I'm not sure what car we're going to put there. I'm going to hire you. Put your name. Oh, hello, Paul. Today, the commander told me that I'm going to be new, new, new. I'm a person, new. Hello, Paul. Today, look at this. We're having a good time here. No one came over. drum dance group from the four countries all have their own songs and dances they performed for the crowd. Calling an invitational during the week meant filling up the platform at Jim Kui Park with Inuit from all over the circumpolar world. After a long day seating at the meetings with many strong and difficult issues discussed, 
everyone remained in the highest of spirits, displaying Inuit pride, as it's not very often you get to dance with fellow Inuit from so far away. My brother in copper mine? Yes, no. Fred lies. Hi, Fred. Come on. Yeah, I saw him when I saw him. I see him when I saw him. I saw him when I saw him. I saw him when I saw him. I saw him when I saw him. Hi. Good boy. For all the people in the outlying communities who couldn't make it for the conference, we now bring you one of the main highlights for the gala evening event. Jim Cooey Park was packed with hundreds of people eagerly awaiting the performance. As it was Wednesday, Canada night, and the group hails from northern Quebec, being of the Innu nation, here's Cashton. Shabbat shalom, shabbat shalom. 
was Greenland's evening to entertain and entertain the crowd they did. One lone drummer and four Inuit performers began the evening with a display of their theater and comic entertainment. If someone was sleepy, this performance sure woke them quickly. The drummer is known back in Greenland as Egon. He was accompanied by the Tukak Theater Group. Although this first display was quite frightening for some, the performance was fun. From theater costumes to traditional dress, there's quite the difference as we see and listen to the Mick Choir. We'll end the evening off with them and bring you into the final day of the Inuit Circumpolar Conference.
This week made history in the eyes of the Inuit. The delegation from Canada, Alaska, Greenland and Russia now stand together to face the common issues which were brought out for many years. Everyone realizes that these topics have been talked about many times, but now is the time to make resolutions to which change will come instead of just being a reoccurring issue. Each country, although far apart, have such common concerns and in the coming three years will try to improve the Inuit lifestyle and possibly show the Seventh Circumpolar Conference many positive outcomes. Mary Simon began her president leadership of the Inuit Circumpolar Conference in 1986 at the Fourth General Assembly in Kotzebue, Alaska. This was her final conference as president. Well, I think it's, uh, it's important to remember that uh, a lot of the issues that ICC deals with are, uh, are ongoing issues. Uh, but at the same time, we have to uh, look to see what we were able to do at this particular ICC General Assembly. And uh, I think there were some very good discussions on the issue of self-government. Uh, related to many aspects of what's happening in the circumpolar Arctic, like in Alaska, uh, with the issue of uh, sub the subsistence issue and the uh, uh, whole, I whole reason uh, behind that and, and trying to take more control over the issues that directly affect us. Self-government has been uh, like a very critical component to this, uh, to this General Assembly. And uh, I believe that the resolutions that uh, will be coming out of the conference uh, are uh, illustrative of the importance of self-government, not, not, not only within our own regions, but as a people. And uh, I think that that's something that, uh, that has come out of this conference, which is very important. The other issue is uh, there's been a lot more discussion on environment and development. Like in past conferences, people were talking a lot more about like protecting the environment and the living resources. People are talking more uh, about how we can protect our environment and our living resources and our surroundings at the same time development proceeds. And Inuit want to make sure that uh, if development does proceed, that it has to be uh, sustainable, and that is that it has to sustain our way of life in the Arctic, uh, and at the same time participate in the development so that we can have a more economic base, so we can provide more jobs to our uh, young people and our communities. And in order to do that, we have to look more to see how we can provide a balance between okay, the two. I mean, that has always been an important aspect of ICC, but there seems to be more emphasis uh, at this conference as, as to how we can achieve what is considered to be sustainable development. And I think it's important uh, to note that Inuit view sustainable development I think in a very different way than other societies because sustainable development has, is a way of life for us. It's not something that we have to create. It's, it's a, it has been a way of life for centuries and the sustainability encompasses all of our lives like our social, cultural, uh, health, all those different dimensions have to be looked after so that we can sustain our way of life and 
the, and the land that we live upon and that we depend upon for our, uh, for our own livelihood and also to, for our economic base. So, you know, issues are important, like subsistence practices are critical, but at the same time, I think people are looking to see how, uh, without affecting the uh, traditional subsistence activities of our, of our communities, that we can look to more equitable ways of, of becoming uh, involved in, uh, in other activities like economic development. So I feel that those are some of the things that have come out at this conference. The other important thing is, are two things. One is the Arctic policy. Uh, at this conference, uh, it seems a little ironic that it's, 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 it's happening at the conclusion of my uh, term of office because I've worked very hard for the Arctic policy and uh, at this General Assembly they were able to adopt the work in its entirety uh, and to me that was very important even though the Arctic policy will continue to evolve because I see it as a living document that has to be changed according to what's happening in the Arctic and the wishes and the, and the aspirations of the Inuit. But, you know, we're at a stage now where we have come this far. The next critical step will be, well, how do we utilize the Arctic policy? And I'm hoping that the new president and the executive council will look at this question very seriously. The other important question is this, uh, the Russian Inuit becoming members of the ICC. Uh, that's something that still has to be decided today. But my feeling is that uh, it's, it's really the right time to bring them as full members. And, you know, I can't say what the decision is going to be later on today. But personally, I feel that, uh, that uh, the, so uh, the Russian Inuit should be made uh, full members of the ICC so that they can have the same kind of, of ability to, let's say, vote on uh, resolutions and participate in all aspects of the ICC work. So those, you know, those are just sort of some of the uh, issues that I see myself. I mean, there are others, and I don't want to sound like I'm, I'm excluding issues that are very critical to the communities, and that is like the health, social well-being of our communities, which is also a very important aspect. But the reason I emphasize self-government so much is because through the ability to be able to take more control and to and to uh, you know pass policy and various uh, ordinances or, or legislation that those types of issues like some of the problems that we have in our communities will better be dealt with and hopefully in the future they won't be as serious as they are right now. We need now a resolution. Eileen McLean, I need a unanimous vote on that. Have it. I hereby declare Eileen McLean the next president of ICC. Attending the work that you are. Congratulations. McLean, work that you are attending work to ICC. Issues are very specific. One will be on whaling. Canada has a concern on whaling, and they've been working on that. The other one will be on the environment. The other one will be on human rights. And uh, the other one will be on economics. Primarily, those are the topics, health and social issues. Five topics, really, that we are going to be addressing. Uh, 
at ane rin ako tiptigon suli, asisuli inyun yan ning inyun inuit, asisuli timimun ilo ako tit, tamat ko at arversiok tuat Canada sa mga isumalu te kaktok arversiok ni ani kun asita from muna sa wag ni ani put. In terms of the conference in general, when you go back, just speaking about the whole conference, including the elders and the youth caucuses and groups. What will you, when people come up and say, what was the, what were some of the main things that you guys accomplished over there in Inuvik? What would you tell them? The main things that we accomplished was um, getting the ICC back together. One, that was a major accomplishment, getting all the Inuit people back together to discuss the issues that have been before us. Um, the Arctic policy is one good example that's finally been accepted in its final form today. And that's a major accomplishment because that's been a number of years in the works. Sama sivun niyok tuwa nun arik pala si wawang na tegu sa kaktok makpirarak to sama savaring na rakput ako sivuan ni kapsin ni sama ukiw ni savaring na rakput tam na ako kutuari gapti ko savak pag kuwea na piyara taktok. That is the major accomplishment, the arik policy, because it states in the policy all the concerns that we have on the environment, the global peace, the way we feel about military weaponry, all those are in place now. And those are our guiding, uh, our guiding forces within ICC. Alaska Luoka ICC, Atanoyat. John Schaefer, Nutan Lugok, Mini Gray Lugok, Les Carpenter, Lutajiba, Atanop Saktok. Welcome back. I would like to ask uh, the Korean delegation. Buyo? Our members of uh, Executive Council for the ICC are Akkalu Klinger and Ingmai. Tajwagoka, 